in order to understand hypoxia, let's start with understanding some ways that oxygen is produced and consumed, and we'll call those sources and sinks of oxygen. First, let's consider a calm day on the Gulf of Mexico. So we have a relatively flat sea, and the green dots here, we'll consider those as algae or phytoplankton in the water. And then we have our sediments down here on the bottom, shrimp and crabs and clams, some of the organisms that live down there, as well as billions and billions of bacteria live in the sediments. Now, when you see these red arrows here, those are describing oxygen being input into the system. And one of the main ways that oxygen is put into a system is by diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of particles from an area of higher to lower concentration. So if there's a higher concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere, oxygen will diffuse across the surface of the water into the water. Now on a windy day with lots of wave action, hopefully that makes sense that on a day like that, there would be a greater amount of diffusion compared to a calm day. Waves act like a giant aerator circulating the water and bringing that atmospheric oxygen in. So the atmosphere is one of the primary sources, if not the primary source of oxygen in aquatic systems. Well, let's think about our calm day and let's add a low amount of nutrients to the system now. And let's add some sunshine. Remember I said these red arrows represent oxygen production. So the algae now, they're producing oxygen through photosynthesis. So now we have another source of oxygen, the algae or phytoplankton in the water. So atmospheric oxygen diffusing in and photosynthesis from the algae. And if there's aquatic plants on the bottom too, then those will also produce some oxygen. Those are two major sources of oxygen. So if you think about it, a windy, sunny day, you should get a lot of oxygen in the water on a windy, sunny day compared to a calm, sunny day and a windy sunny day with a high nutrient input the more nutrients there are the the better the algae are able to grow and reproduce so you'll have more algae in the water if there's high nutrients and more photosynthesis so the nutrients that are being input to that aquatic system from the atmosphere from rainfall inputs from rivers those will affect the growth of the phytoplankton and therefore how much oxygen they're producing just think about a cloudy day too compared to a sunny day you're going to have less sunlight so less photosynthesis and then a calm cloudy day that's going to be your lowest input of oxygen to a system not much photosynthesis not much um, atmospheric input of oxygen the surface of that water is a barrier to oxygen getting in it's a barrier between the atmosphere and the water maybe you've heard of surface tension on the surface of water. If you break that surface tension with waves, then oxygen's able to get into the water easier. So a windy cloudy day would be better as far as oxygen input than a calm cloudy day. Now what are these arrows down here on the bottom? They, this is sinks of oxygen and things that consume oxygen. Now phytoplankton in the water, fish that are swimming in the water, they consume oxygen. Phytoplankton also produce it through photosynthesis. But in the sediments, the sediments are typically the main source of oxygen consumption in an aquatic system. And the bacteria in the sediments, they are the main consumers of oxygen in the sediments. You have your crabs and your shrimp and different things like that in the sediments, but compared to the bacteria, they're oxygen consumption is relatively small. So the sediments are a huge source of oxygen consumption in a system. Now one of the main things that affects the amount of oxygen consumption in the sediments is nutrients. So if you have a low nutrient system doesn't get much input of nutrients to it, you're not going to have as much growth, so you're not going to have as much death of organisms. And so when organisms die, a lot of times they sink to the bottom. And bacteria, they're decomposers. They decompose things, break them down, and you, they use oxygen in that process. So if you don't have much growing, you don't have much dying. So you don't have as much decomposition and resultant oxygen consumption. Now compare that to a high nutrient system. 
you have more growth going on and therefore more death more things dying too so you have larger consumption when I draw larger arrows here for oxygen sources and sinks that means more more is going on so the higher the nutrients the more things are growing which means the more that's dying so the greater the decomposition and resultant oxygen consumption so let's go back over this for oxygen sources and sinks the main sources in an aquatic system are the atmosphere diffusion from the atmosphere and then the algae and plants in the water phytoplankton they're also called algae that are suspended in the water those are called phytoplankton the main sink of oxygen is the sediments but there are other sources of oxygen consumption as well sediments are the most important one to consider